Hello there. I thought I'd do a couple of videos on morality, deal with a couple of large questions and my opinions on them, including objective and subjective morality, uh, theistic and atheistic morality, uh, and I'll also deal with certain claims uh, about morality that creationists make that I find uh, somewhat interesting. Uh, given that I'm a theistic evolutionist, uh, I will be arguing uh, in a theistic way for morality, and my moral philosophy does involve God. So, if you are offended by opposing points of view, and theism is among opposing points of view for you, I recommend that you don't watch this video. Uh, and this video is just going to explain my personal uh, moral philosophy and give you an idea of the reasoning that I use to come to my ideas about morality. Alright, technically I am a voluntarist, though the common uh, image of that position is the concept that God arbitrarily selects uh, commandments to give us. I don't believe that to be the case. I believe uh, moral commandments and laws do come directly from God, but I believe they are given to us because it is best for us to have those commandments as opposed to some other commandments. Now, I do not believe, nor does anybody believe, despite the very common straw man argument made, that the Bible is the only source of moral truth. In fact, the Bible is rather clear that the Bible is not the only source of moral truth. It says that God has written his moral law on everybody's hearts. So that means that we will intuitively know what is moral and what is not, even if we've never heard the word Bible. What this means is that unless they feel it is beneficial for them to do otherwise, people will behave according to a certain set of guidelines. And this is true. It's never been known or never been proven that somebody did something wrong for the sake of doing something wrong. On every occasion that someone has done something wrong, knowingly, it has been because they believed it to be either right or because they believed the benefit that they gained from it outweighed the wrongness, regardless of whether or not that is actually the case. It is their perception. Now, that said, I actually do not believe that there is an objective set of absolutes saying that you should not murder or saying that you should not steal. I don't actually believe in that. What I believe in is something that is very similar, but I think somewhat more elegant. You see, people like Epidemic 2020, in order to uh, factor in circumstances effectively, he has to say, killing a non-consenting human solely for entertainment is objectively wrong. However, this breaks down in a scenario where an antimatter bomb is placed in the United Kingdom by someone in America. Uh, now, as this person is about to, from the continental United States, remotely activate a bomb that will kill everyone in the entire United Kingdom, a serial killer who really doesn't care about the destruction of the United Kingdom, is just out for his personal sadistic pleasure, kills this person and stops him from setting off the bomb. Again, this wasn't done with the intention of saving the United Kingdom. The serial killer knew it would do that, but he just wanted his sadistic pleasure. He didn't care if it saved someone else or not. In that situation, someone has been killed solely for entertainment, and yet the action would certainly be considered to be moral. I would actually like to see Epidemic respond to that point. But anyways, in his moral system, you have to just keep piling on qualifiers and rationalizations, uh, never ultimately getting to the actual truth. You can always find a situation in which an immoral action by his definitions is moral. And that's because he relies largely on deontology, which is a entirely flawed moral philosophy because it has nothing to do with morality whatsoever. Uh, the concept of deontology is that there are just certain things you ought not do, regardless of any benefit they now provide. If it's something that wouldn't normally provide benefit, it's wrong to do even when it does, and that's completely bullshit. 
Now, as a result, I realized that uh, ultimately you couldn't possibly found morality in a set of things that ought not be done, even if you factor in circumstances, because no matter how hard you try, you can always come up with a scenario that will cause a, by definitions of people like Epidemic, objectively immoral action to be moral. Even when he tries to factor in circumstances, he'll usually fail. Rather, morality is consisted of a set of things that ought not happen, rather than ought not be done. The only thing that objectively ought not to be done is causing one of the things that ought not happen to happen unless it is necessary to prevent a worse thing from happening than the thing that you are causing to happen that normally shouldn't. Now, this means that my second major disagreement with Epidemic 2020 uh, is a consequence of this, and that is, he believes that God's eternal, unchanging nature is the foundation for morality. Uh, there are two problems with that. One, the more sensible moral system I just outlined can not possibly account for that. It cannot exist inside a nature. And two, God's nature is an is, not an ought, and there is an is-ought gap. Uh, see, now the way Epidemic will argue against this, because he's uh, had arguments with me before about this, he will just confuse the way we come to know about morality with the morality itself. He will say that we become aware of objective morality through our intuition, and I agree with him on that. But what he claims is that we then go to find the source of morality and discover that the best source of morality is, for whatever reason, the nature of the Christian God, because all of the things that we know to be moral are uh, within the nature of the Christian God, and none of them are outside the nature of the Christian God. Uh, to which my response is that that doesn't answer my question. Uh, and Epidemic, if I'm strawmanning you at all with that point, then uh, if, when you make a video response, because I'm extremely confident that you will, uh, go ahead and correct me on that if I am strawmanning you, because I, that's not my intention. Uh, that's what I take your meaning to be when you make that argument. The reason that that doesn't answer my question is because it has nothing to do with whether God's nature is an is or an ought. It doesn't make God's nature an ought. All it does is follow the story of how we became aware, or at least of how he claims to have become aware, that God's nature is the source of objective morality. It's basically just explaining the origin of a car to prove it's not a car. And in a sense, it just feels like he's trying to swamp me with a long speech without addressing my points. Again, if I'm misrepresenting you, Epidemic, and I think I probably am, not because I feel as if I'm missing something from your argument, but because I feel you're too smart to make an argument that's so unbelievably stupid, then please, by all means, correct me on this, and even skip this portion of the video uh, if you ever make a response. It can also be argued that my moral system, voluntarism, uh, does not actually cross the isot gap either, because God's commands are ises. Uh, and here is my response to that. Uh, they are not is's, they are themselves oughts. Let's say, for example, you were to write a moral law yourself. Now, unlike God's, yours would not necessarily be binding, but if you were to write a set of things that you don't believe ought to happen on a wipe-off board and set that aside, then it's objectively true, uh, regardless of your opinion, that that's what's written on the wipe-off board. For example, if you were to forget later, then the wipe-off board would not mutate and its ink would not rearrange itself such that now uh, your past writing conformed to what you currently mistakenly believed about what it was. So if God writes separate from himself a set of moral laws, then they exist separately from him, even if he could go back later and change them if he wanted to. For a real-world analogy, uh, I disagree with the majority of what I said in my old Young Earth Creationist videos, but I still said that, and those opinions still exist, and even though my opinion has changed, uh, that opinion is still what exists in those uh, videos. So, to briefly summarize my moral philosophy, 
I believe that uh, morals come from God uh, directly from commandments that he gave, or not necessarily from commandments, I'm not even sure that's the right word, but from things that he dictates ought not happen. Now, he didn't make these dictations arbitrarily, uh, nor did he convey all of them in scripture. These dictations instead exist for our personal benefits, because it will be uh, very beneficial uh, should we later become aware of these dictations. Now, uh, as for how we became aware of these laws, uh, basically, when God created the laws of the universe and the laws of logic, he created it in such a way that he would get the exact result he wanted. He created it in such a way that sentient species would inevitably develop, and he created the universe such that when they did, they would be under selection to come up with these specific moral laws. Now, that does not mean that we will never infringe upon these moral laws. Uh, humans and other animals often do violate moral laws. Uh, you know, that actually brings me to an interesting side point. A common example given is that piranhas don't eat each other, when in fact, on occasion, they do. By the way, uh, humans also eat each other, even though we uh, recognize and consider it to be immoral to eat each other. We still do on occasion. Some humans do. Now, that seems kind of like death by a thousand qualifications to me, personally. 